allowing me to describe and actually evaluate for you your favorite things which are aerobic fitness tests. So we're gonna start here. This is what we refer to as direct gas analysis. And I'm gonna guess that you're not gonna have a go at this. Maybe you will, maybe you're lucky enough to have a sports science lab in your school, or probably more likely you might go on a, a trip visit to let's say a sports lab, sports science lab at a university. So you might maybe get to have a go at this, but I wanna describe it to you before we then go about evaluating. And I guess it brings me to an important point. I'm gonna try and describe these things to you, and you can see it's already on the page really, but I really want to evaluate these methods for you. And with evaluate, of course, we're looking for those strengths and weaknesses and reaching sort of conclusions off the back of them. So descriptions, first of all, this is a ramp test. Just to be clear, this means that it gets continually harder and what I mean by that is the intensity increases throughout the test so you can almost sort of see it as a bit of a you know multi-stage fitness test for example does that too although this is a, this is a ramp this is treadmill based now we are measuring effectively oxygen in and we are measuring oxygen out and of course we're doing that through that face mask which then leads down into the analyzer into the computer which gives the readout and as a result of that we can take the difference between those two figures and that difference by definition is oxygen consumption. So we can specifically measure oxygen consumption at different intensities of a specific exercise. And can I just write down the word specific? This is really specific. We will know the exact oxygen uh, volume for the exact measure of intensity. So what are the positives about this getting into our evaluation? Positives in green. Well, first of all, it is a direct measure. That is positive because, of course, we know, therefore, that that result is valid and that result is reliable. Remember your distinctions between valid and reliable. Valid is testing what it claims to test. Well, we are literally measuring the difference of O2. Um, therefore, that's a consumption. Um, but also, it's reliable in the sense if you retest it, it's likely to be the same result, apart from one uh, distinction, which I'll make in a second. Now, the weaknesses I'm going to put into red here, and here is that distinction, the test is maximal. Now, it's actually quite a rare person who can get themselves to a really maximal, you know, about to flake kind of kind of. Um, condition is most people they're called, they're called volitional states but most people will drop out before that the other point of course is that this is an exclusive sort of model and a term I want to introduce to you here is that it's a lab test now of course by definition you therefore need a lab and a sports science team available for you to actually go through that so of course they are limitations but this has many many strengths at the elite level for measuring um, performance. Now, the one you, one of the ones you're more likely to have taken part in is a multi-stage fitness test. Try and call it that rather than a bleep test. So, a couple of key things as reminders: the distance is 20 minute, 20 minutes. The the stages are one minute stages, so each stage is one minute, and of course, it incrementally gets harder per stage. If you miss two uh, shuttles, you fail and you're out at that particular point. But this is where I really want to get to your score. Let's say you get uh, stage eight shuttle six. That score leads to a vo2 max prediction okay so that's the ultimate score that we're coming out of here so what are the advantages to this test what are we going to put in green well thing number one is it's great for groups okay it's great for groups which by the way is one of the reasons that you uh, might have done it in school for example i don't know why i wrote that um it's great for groups and therefore it's great for teams. So if you're taking part in a hockey team, for example, it's quite likely that you would at some point do this. But the other thing is this is a very simple protocol using very basic equipment. Yeah, you've got to have a multi-stage fitness recording. Of course you have, but it's a simple protocol. And it's a simple protocol because it's not a lab test. It's a field test. That doesn't mean we're doing it in the field. It means we're doing it in the field. Okay, we're doing it in the performance environment. Therefore, that makes it a really accessible one. And what might explain to you why you're more likely to do this unless you're performing at elite levels. Now, weaknesses, guess what? This test is also maximal. That has its motivational issues. Remember that term I used? Volitional states, when you give up, might be the determining factor. We can also say it's a prediction only. Okay, so it's not unlike gas analysis, measuring oxygen consumption. The other thing is it's poor for non-runners. Okay, so what we mean by this is if you're a swimmer, say, this is going to be less and less valid. Although in my experience, swimmers actually do quite well in this because, of course, their aerobic fitness tends to be quite good. And often there's a lot of swimmers who combine swimming and running anyway. Let me not get into the triathlon, biathlon type uh, consideration here. But you might well just consider the other side of that argument. But there's our strengths and weaknesses. Notice again that we are doing what? 
we are evaluating. That's really what I want to do in this particular tutorial. Now, let's get down to this test here. It's one of the ones you might know least about. It's called the Queen's the Queen's College step test okay so that's what we're talking about here and i'm going to describe it to you first and then we're going to evaluate it okay and again i really hope that you're getting a chance to do these in real life so first of all the step is this step here is 41.3 centimeters we see that here right so the step has to be a specific measure this i believe is a female performer so she's going to be doing 22 steps per minute and as you see she's going to do that for three minutes so she's literally going to metronomically step up and down at the set rhythm 22 steps per minute. If she happened to be male, she would do 24 steps per minute. Now, this is really where it gets interesting. At the end of that three minutes, we measure her heart rate. And we do that after some five seconds. So of course, we could use a heart rate monitor, but it could be that we just do, uh, we just sort of um, monitor the pulse on the wrist or the carotid artery in the neck. But this is really important. We take that pulse reading for 15 seconds and we multiply it by four, and that gives us a recovery heart rate. It tells us where our heart rate, or the, the participant's heart rate, got to at the end of that three minutes of aerobic submaximal work. Now, that gives us an indication of the relative aerobic fitness of this individual. Now, why do we only take, for, why don't we measure it for 60 seconds? Well, of course, because over that 60 seconds, the heart rate is gonna be falling. So we need to take a short burst of heart rate, multiply it by four, and then, of course, this is going to give us that immediate post-exercise, post-test heart rate. If we, if we went for a minute, a minute later, the heart rate is going to be lower by definition, right? Now, what are the strengths of this test? Well, first of all, unlike all the others, it's submaximal. That means that the motivation aspect is not significant. It's also really simple. It can be done in most gyms, sports halls sports clubs and it's really good for groups now obviously with groups it would involve the individual monitoring their own heart rate maybe that's got a limitation to it but there you go that's where we do it now here's some issues negatives in red we must evaluate this thing of course the measurement that's of the heart rate of course it might have errors might have errors and what i mean by that is when you effectively <laughs> have to take your own pulse say on your wrist you might miscount you might not get it straight away it might take more than five seconds to find it and the other point i'll just sort of draw it out here is it's a prediction only it is not a measure so a little like our multi-stage fitness test this is a prediction unlike our direct gas analysis which is a measure so there's a weakness of that particular test so queen's college step test do try and make sure you get to actually experience that it's an interesting one to do and finally one of the ones you've probably all done in your p lessons at some point or another maybe i'm not sure when this should be but we're doing the 12 minute cooper run okay who was this person cooper has got a lot to answer for so the person has to run as far as possible in 12 minutes okay now the point i would make is that this needs to be a very specific distance all right now in this case i've got a 400 i mean it's not very well to scale this person would be giant but we've got a 400 meter exact distance here you know we've got our 100 meters here and we've got our 100 meters here so we know it's 400 meter round right so we know that we're going to measure the distance. That's the output. We're going to measure, for example, that a person does 1,250 meters, say, in the 12 in the 12 minutes. And it must be measurable. And that's why I'm saying that specific distance. The other thing we say here is it must be a flat surface. Okay, we can't be doing inclines and declines. Now, what are the advantages to this? Well, guess what? It's super simple. It's great for groups. So here's the reasons, some of the reasons why it gets done in schools, of course. But there are drawbacks, okay? It's no good for non-runners, okay? So if you happen to be in a running-based sport, let's say football, that's probably going to be okay. But if you are a cyclist, this is not going to be particularly effective for you, right, to, to measure your uh, aerobic condition. And the other thing is people find this really, really, really tedious. And um, we could also say as well that it's maximal. You're going as hard as you can for 12 minutes. And that doesn't mean you're going out in a sprint, but you're certainly going to be at the absolute limits by the end of it, if done properly, of course. So can I just reiterate a point to you before we finish here? The point is that our job with these four fitness tests was to describe and to evaluate. And I believe we've done that well. Thank you.